Hello, my name is Ryan Page and I'm a Concrete Application Specialist for Techless Structures. Today in this video we're going to be talking about location breakdown structures or building hierarchies within Techless Structures. Now we're going to go ahead and just skip the usual preamble and kind of get right into things. Uh, we're looking at providing a location breakdown structure or a building hierarchy to our current model. Now before we begin, just keep in mind that this only applies to using pores and works with the pore view uh, and pore object and pore unit workflows. So uh, this will not be working with your traditional concrete parts. This is going to be applied to your pores. So with that, let's begin. The first step is to open up the organizer, which you can always find on the manage ribbon. And once you bring it up and open, go ahead and sync that with the model and I've already gone and done that what you see here in the model is my pores broken down and I'm colorizing the model by pore. Um, so what we want to look at is the project properties the categories right here at the top right if we drop this down underneath we have uncategorized which is our objects and then we have a couple of other things we have site and if we expand that then we have building this is where we can, through the organizer, provide a location breakdown structure. You can select these, you can right click and hit properties, give it a new name, so you can give it the site name, 100 prospect we'll say, something like that. Um, so you, you can go ahead and, and, and make it applicable if this is more than one, if you have more than one building in a model, you can have building one, two, three, four, and you can, you can create new buildings underneath here, uh, new building, uh, or even a new site. And so you can have multiple buildings with, uh, everything. What this does is it allows us to go in and select that building, and then we can define its boundaries, uh, for that building. This is basically based off of grids. Uh, is the best way to kind of look at this. So we can change the building name to building one or main building. And then it's, this is going to be its overall boundary for that building. So we can click on that and we can see. Now it's aligning to the grid. So what's happening is, is we're falling on the, the center line of the grid there. So a little, little extra uh, falls outside the boundary that's being shown, but that's okay. As long as the main part starts within the boundary, it's going to be collected. Um, and so we can go ahead and modify this by choosing uh, different grid lines, one through six, as you can see here, correlating to my grid or, um, a, a through G on the Y axis up this way um, and then you can you choose from what elevations apply to from the basement all the way to the top or maybe not so much now in addition to defining a building we can also define sections and floors another way, another way to look at sections is areas within a building and this can be really helpful to kind of break things down and parse things out you can add a section just by simply hitting the button you can give it a name I like the word area better than section myself and let's go ahead and say that maybe area area one go is from two to four so we'll change that two to four and I'm gonna redraw the view here to get rid of that bounding box uh, and then we'll go from A to C on the Y axis okay and we'll do uh, all the way through the building so we can always test to see what that looks like by clicking this uh, draw the section in the in the boundary here and what we're going to want to do is just apply I would say uh, two bay by two bay uh, areas to the rest of the model it's pretty straightforward all you have to do is rinse and repeat and we'll go ahead and do from two oops, from four to six and we'll do A to C again and then add another section there we are and we'll go back from two to four and we'll go from C to E and continue onward okay now that we have these established we can go ahead and just double check them to make sure that they're coming in by displaying that that area in the model you can see they're popping up looks like I forgot three or four sorry uh, and so we can see what it's going to be encompassed. Again, don't worry about this slight overlap. As long as the object falls within the boundary we've dictated, it is going to grab it. So we're just being clean by using our grid lines. So I'm going to go ahead and redraw my view to kind of get rid of those. I'm happy with my areas. Now all we all have to do is establish our floors or elevations. So we'll move over to the next tab. 
Now we can go ahead and add a new floor system. It provides a generic name here. You can give it something unique, uh, the finished floor elevations or uh, top of steel or, or you know top of deck, that sort of thing, whatever you prefer. Um, and then you can build these up by yourself, right? You can give it a name and kind of give it an, air, an, an elevation. But notice here that it's applying the floor system to these areas. That's what this box means right here. If you had some left over, you could drop down and select them and continue to add them. Um, I'm going to create the floor systems based on the grid. So one of the added benefits of establishing your grid ahead of time in your project, not just for creating your own views, which helps you know get around the model and create drawings but it's also it's helpful to go ahead and populate these these elevations so having your 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 fields in the z axis over here let me move that over will will help you ben, uh, generate this rather quickly so i'm going to hit that and right away i got floor 1 that's actually going to be the basement you can rename these i'm really fine with the rest of the way this is named for our demonstration but you could say finish floor at elevation blah 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 or you could say uh, you know uh, first floor second floor you know however you wanted to do it now the last tab is settings now remember how we we're talking about how things are going to be counted or included into an area. So what happens when you have an object that overlaps? This is how you're going to be able to go out and set those. Now we have a breakdown of these on our TUA for this particular topic, but to give you the overview here, more or less if it exists within a boundary, it's going to be assigned for that. If an object is, exists within two areas or two, between two boundaries, this is where um, you're going to be able to differentiate that. Uh, it, it usually plays on either the center of gravity um, and it's based on the main part. So the, the main object or the main part in your pore unit or in an assembly or you know anything like that, it's going to go to um, wherever, wherever that center of gravity is. And uh, you have a couple of other options that you can feel free to play around with. But once you're done, the setting your building, then adding your sections, then your floors, double checking your settings, you hit modify. So now what happens is Tech is going to go ahead and apply these to the building breakdown structure. Um, and it's going to then close this dialog. Well, we'll close that dialog box. And now we can see here that all of a sudden I have all of my areas broken down. We can expand and collapse these. So if I select the building, all that information is here. If I right click, I can go properties. I can define which property template is going to be used on that particular one. Uh, for, so for building, now it'll show uh, pours instead of default, or we can switch it up here uh, and go to pour units perhaps, and then pin that. And we can look at that information. Uh, we can also select things by area now. So I can come to area one, select in the model, and then anything that's shown in area one is going to be encompassed. Now the center of gravity of these slabs falls in, I bet you, into area two. So it's all about how you model, okay? Um, but you get the general idea. This, if you play around with these options, remember defining these boundaries is done on the building level. So under project, you'll have the ability to create or modify the site, and then within the site, a building is contained. Inside that building, if we select it and right click, we can then define the boundaries, uh, boundary boxes for location in which we have the building tab, the sections, the floors, and the settings. If you're interested in exploring more on this topic and getting a little deeper into the ins and outs, you can go to our Tecla User Assistance webpage and search for Create Location Categories in Organizer. This search will bring you a result that allows you, it gives you, this, that search will provide you with a page that gives you direct step-by-step -step instructions on the overview that we've just covered. This concludes our video. Thank you for watching. For more information on the topics discussed in this video, or for other topics, make sure to visit our Tecla User Assistance webpage for product guides, support articles, tutorials, and more.